Hello Targar friends. Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here and once again it's time for another Orc Mode workout. And today was Max Effort Squat Day and it was a phenomenal workout. Uh, but just a quick reminder for those of you who enjoy these vlogs, please remember to click like down below. It would be greatly appreciated if you would help keep the likes higher than the dislikes. Please do so. And run down and click like on my other videos for today. Uh, we have a lot to talk about in this session. Did a lot of new stuff going to have a lot of questions. Uh, there's going to be a learning curve on some of this for me too. And it's something I kind of hinted at already. I've already hinted at already. Something I've been thinking about. But let's get over to the squats. Alright, first time I used this bar to max a couple weeks ago, um, I hit 505 off this box. Okay, 505 off the box. Today it came up on my random number generator. And I'm like, what the hell? Let's just do it, you know? Two weeks ago, we got the bar for the first time, tried it for straight weight, then it came up out of my four options for the random number, and we got really one of the easier accommodations, 10%, 10% chain weight. And I want guys to remember, I just round those, usually round them up, um, I put 57 pounds on. Now, a couple links are at the bottom, right, a couple links are at the bottom. I'm not worried about that, not really a big deal, losing a few pounds, but I'm over 10% slightly, so who cares? And we got some good lifts. Here's 485. Keep in mind, that's before the chains. That's what's on the bar. Some people are like, well, I don't see the math. The bar is 85 pounds. And yes, it is a pain in the butt to put into the rack. I'm not going to lie. It is a pain to take in and out of the rack. Uh, but it's made by Titan. It's Titan's Rackable Cambered Bar. If you guys check their website, it is 85 pounds. So anyone who ever doubts my different stuff, you guys can look at their websites. And all the road plates are calibrated and stuff. So 500 actually felt pretty easy. Now, this pulls me back a little bit, so it's a little hard to control that last bit on the box. And yes, I'm using just a barely parallel box. Um, I have reasons I'm doing that. I've discussed some of it. I'll discuss some of it more later on. Neither here nor there at the moment. Okay, I'm not running the really, really deep box. I'm running a 13-inch box now. And let's just get some big numbers on it. I had to adjust all that. Um, yeah, obviously, continuing to lose body fat. Although people are like, you've lost a lot of weight. No, I only lost 7 pounds. Keep in mind, I only bulked and gained 12. So, uh, I clearly gained muscle in that. And we're continuing to gain strength while slowly losing body weight. But, you know, the 500 felt good, so I went 515. And I got it. Realistically, I could have made another jump. A lot of people, when they saw the other one, were like, well, you made that look easy. I'm like, really? I probably could have made another weight jump. But I looked at it and said, you know what? That's a really solid PR. Let's just stop because I'm going to do a lot of new stuff today. Let's not beat myself up. All right, I did snatch grip deadlifts. Now, some people are going to say, actually, the first one it was really narrow. And then I went wider on the next up. I was just getting a feel for it. All right, I was getting a feel for it. I went ahead and strapped up when I got to this weight and up uh, because I'm not worried about the grip on it. I do more grip work than probably most anyone that you know. Now, some of you are going to be exceptions, and I know that some of you are. But for the majority of people listening, I probably do more grip training than the majority of you or any of your friends. So if I want to do straps for some snatch grip stuff, I'm going to do it. Now, I got wider as I went. Um, and on the later sets, I just started wrapping the straps basically around the rings. Okay. These are awkward for me still. I'm going to get wider. Now, I had some people actually argue already from a picture. Hey, you know, this just isn't really snatch grip. It's, like, it's neither here nor there. It is dramatically harder than a conventional deadlift. Okay, because these were challenging. And you guys have seen me pull 615. And you guys have seen even my, my deficits and stuff recently. I mean, I'm deficit pulling 575 off of a couple inch deficit. All right, this 425 is hard. Now, am I going to work on getting a little bit wider? Yes. I've got to learn to use straps. By the way, I couldn't get the straps wrapped up right. They were loose and it made it really awkward. I've got to work more with straps. I'll work more on getting wider on these. But on these, basically, I'm on the rings. Index finger is on the rings probably close to. I tried to just wrap the straps around the rings is what I tried to basically do on the bench rings. Okay. On the other snatch grip stuff later, I go true snatch grip. I go wider. I needed to get a feel for this. 
And here's what I'm going to say. They were challenging. These were hard. Now, someone had asked me already, hey, you know, why not just do high pulls or snatch grip shrugs if you're trying to build the upper back? Because I'm using these for posterior chain also. I'm going to be doing a bunch of snatch grip stuff. I'm going to start working with some of the Olympic lift variations and not because I want to Olympic lift. I have no interest in Olympic lifting. I have no interest in learning their techniques. Not my purview. What I do like is the massive shoulder development. Okay, we know I need more upper back in general. We know my bench would benefit from it. My squat would benefit from it. Everything will. My shoulder health. I've started messing with more of the wide grip stuff and I found that it's helped so much in addition to all my rotator cuff work I've been doing. It's really helping my shoulders feel phenomenal. And I don't mean benching. I'm not actually going to recommend really wide grip benching. I do floor press. The overhead pressing, the rowing, right? The inverted rows. Doing the extra rear delt work and stuff with bands. Um, it's, it's really made a big difference for me. Well, I know I need all of this. So I'm like, let me just work with these because I need the extra power. I need the extra power and explosiveness in general across the board. And these are exercises, all these different things that they use are exercises that help you be more athletic, more explosive, even if you don't do them perfect. They still help with these things. They're good movements for this. And done, technically a lot of them incorrectly. They're phenomenal shoulder developers. Phenomenal hip and posterior chain developers. So that's what I'm doing here. And this is better. Like we know from a hypertrophy perspective, if we're going to do some hypertrophy stuff off deadlifts, we know deficits and snatch grips are way better than conventional deadlifts. We know they are. We've seen Dr. Mike Israel tell other people explain why. Okay. We're forced to use such a massively lighter weight and move the weight a longer range of motion. Now in this case also the upper back development. Now as I've said, I'm going to work on getting wider. I just needed to get, get a feel for it. And I can tell you, even with this width, 425 for sets of five was, was challenging. And until I got to this weight, I only did three sets of five. Now, uh, I do got to get the straps tighter. That's probably a factor because you can't even grip it once the straps are wrapped on. So my normal grip just comes completely out of the equation. Um, I made some boobers with the straps and I realized it. But they felt great. They lit my posterior chain up lit my back up felt great then i decided let me go ahead and on my max days i'm going to mess with some of these isometrics on the sumos right i don't want to do them on my off days i want to dedicate my off days to gpp restoration i don't want to have to mess with this on off days into possible recovery it's a max effort type endeavor let's do it on max effort day so i went a little lighter on it than, than on those this is only like 670 or whatever it is I can't pull that. That's below, just over my max, by a small margin, not a massive margin. But I'm already fatigued. So there's no way I'm breaking that off the floor. That makes it isometric. It's outside of my ability. All right, 665, I think that's what it is. I just estimated. All right, I can't break it off the floor. Therefore, it's an isometric. So I can get over here and I just did three really good pulls. Now, people are saying, what are we counting as, as a good pull? I'm counting six seconds in my head. Now, is that exactly probably what I'm getting? No. I'm just trying to count it in my head, 1, 1,000, 2, and just pull as hard as I can. Pull myself into the bar. Pull, get that isometric, right? Trying to just pull myself into that position so that I can get better at sumos out of the bottom. Because I still don't have the perfect mobility for it, but how do we build mobility? Well, the box squats will continue to help. We build mobility by building muscles. Just like I've built my shoulder mobility further by fixing muscle imbalances, right? I have to build certain muscles up. Hip muscles and things I need to build. This will help because it pulls them into that position. And then we contract maximally at that terminal range of motion for me. And that will help build the mobility. In addition to, you know, all the box squatting with the wider and wider stance. Okay. Now, I know that my hips need to be a hair lower. That's as far as I can pull them down. But we work on it, right? We work on it. I've had some people say, hey, you know, why are you doing There's no point. There's no point. You you did a bunch of sumo. No, but I didn't really work the range of motion hard. So that the musculature needs to be developed. Good mornings are just such a pain in the butt with this straight bar. 
Um, but you know what? I'll take it over the safety bar just crushing my neck. I'll take it. We went up slightly on weight, 235. Now, again, range of motion can sometimes be problematic because I'm having to push my hips way back and I get deeper as I go. I'm pushing my hips way back because I have to because this exceeds my body weight. We're now getting to the point where we're like getting 10 plus pounds over my body weight. And that's going to continue to go up. So that forces you to push the hips back. It's going to adjust the range of motion of the torso. We don't want to be 90 degrees on a heavy good morning. But it gives a desired training effect. But PR, 3 by 10, 235. I'm going to mess with my other bars, of course. I want to see if I can learn to do these with the buffalo bar because it is easier on the shoulders. I know the Cambridge bar will be interesting. Um, I'll mess around with the buffalo bar some coming up and see what we can do with it. But we've got to get stronger and stronger at good mornings. Okay. Maybe to where I'm doing like 275 for sets of 10. Maybe maybe 315 for sets of 10 one day. Okay. I've got some other videos about that. I've kind of discussed where I think Wendler and some of the people may be wrong on that. And you know what? That's fine. I could be wrong. But I'm going to push performance. We've got to get stronger at everything. We have to get stronger at everything. Performance, workload, tension, volume. Okay, we've got to get thicker in all the right places. And all these things are going to bring my squat up, bring my deadlift up. Because that's the purpose of these two days. Now, the thing is, my training is more upper body dominant now than anything. Because I'm so much better at squatting and pulling than benching. Because, I mean, I squat mid 500s, I pull over 600. I haven't even benched 350 yet. Since I was in my 20s. So we've got it. We've got to get the bench up. We want to hit that 375 bench. That's a goal. Even 365 would be a nice milestone. So all my training is upper body dominant. So even these lower body days, we're going to do a lot of upper back. But rather than deal with things like the safety bar to build upper back, that's why I'm doing all these different things. Yes, we're going to use the good mornings. But I'm going to use these bars where I can use more weight and get more tension, more posterior chain. Right? So that we can get really, really strong. And I am going to start maxing on good mornings, too. You know, as, as many people do realize, when you get stronger at good mornings, it doesn't even matter if you good morning your squat, because you'll still lock it. If you get strong enough on a good morning, that gives you a lot of wiggle room. Gives you a lot of leeway to use a lot of hip extension on a squat. So that it's no longer just about the quads at a certain point. So I'll keep pushing the good mornings, keep getting stronger. Use the different bars, rotate bars. But again, all these other movements are, are going to be there to get my upper back. Yeah, I'll start doing pull-ups again eventually. Once my shoulders are healthy enough again, I am going to mess with my rings. I do have the rings. I have gymnastic rings now. Um, I can start messing with those for pull-ups, finding the right grip that allows the correct shoulder space to put no inflammation. But this stuff all made my shoulders feel really good. So my first attempt at snatch grip high pulls. No, they're not perfect. Uh, I got more explosive as I went. I did a 5x5. Five five. And again, the explosive movements like this, we don't need more than 5 to 6 reps in a set. We just do more sets if we need it. We're kind of deviating from a lot of my sets of 10 and 12 and things I do. Which I've done tons and tons and tons of. But now we've got to build some power. And we're still going to continue to do high rep stuff. You guys still saw me do 20s yesterday for some stuff. Uh, again, even my... Reverse hypers, I do 20s and 25s on my off days for restoration. So, and again, these need work, and that's fine. It's fine. Got to start doing them somewhere. And if some people will point out, well, you need to hire, no, I don't need to hire an Olympic coach. I don't care about that. I don't want them to be as good as an Olympic lifter. That's not going to meet my goals. But Olympic lifters are oftentimes small and use technique. I'm trying to build size and brute strength and power carry over to all my power lifts carry over to my big lifts and to get thick and I want a lot of this to allow me to build my whole upper back up more I want that thickness I want shoulders, I want delts, I want traps rhomboids we need all of that fully developed and these are good ways to do it in addition to teaching you to be more powerful and it doesn't matter if they're not perfect right now. A lot of things I've done, people watch me do things and it's not perfect. And eventually it does look really, really good with practice. Right? And eventually I'll have to, you might have to use strat for these. Eventually I'll mess with some of my pads and blocks. And I'll eventually mess with some cleans and hang cleans and hang power cleans. And 
all that stuff. I'll start eventually messing with some of it, even my axle bar, cleaning the axle bar, all sorts of stuff. I'll mess with all of it. Let's just get big, get thick. These are all great supplemental lifts because we know I need a lot more upper back. And these are nice, good full body exercises that will help build my upper back, continue to build my posterior chain, stuff that I need to get better at my big lifts. Okay? And just get thick and get powerful. Right? And it works great into the flow of the conjugate system. It works great because, again, all of our supplemental work, we just work it in. Uh, then I went over and decided to go back to the pen leg rows with the axle bar, but I'm going really wide. I used to do them narrow grip. They're much more challenging. A lot of regripping. But again, this is a lot of my grip training is the axle bar work. So I started off a little light. I got 12, then added another 20 pounds. And then the sets of 10, they weren't necessarily full failure of the lats or anything, but uh, grip was starting to become problematic with such a wide grip on the axle bar. Definitely was a factor. But I still felt the entire back light up and that really wide grip. Okay, The wide grip bent all the way over. Again, putting a heavier focus on the upper back. And I've done tons and tons of pen lay rows, even with the axle bar in the past, but it's been shoulder width grip. Now we're going to mess with the wider grip. Get strong at this. In keeping with what I'm doing for all the upper back. Right? And I have clients do this. I told you guys a long time ago, I have clients who do tons of this. Guys who really have lagging upper backs, who are not advanced lifters. We do, I have them do tons of wide grip pen lace. And it works really fast. So I'm kind of taking my own advice. But it's all got to work together. So, you know, again, people were saying, oh, why, are, why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you doing that? And they just saw me put up the snatch grip deadlifts. And it's like, oh, no, I'm going to do tons of stuff. Especially when I notice how good some of it feels on my shoulders. Again, like the really wide grip overhead pressing. Uh, wide grip inverted rows. I've, I've realized, okay, this is what my shoulder girdle needs. And let's just incorporate it all into a lot of the flow of my training. And a lot of these I'm going to do this stuff on all the days, upper and lower. Different variations of it. And eventually we'll do a lot of different stuff. Yes, I'll mess with chains or bands or whatever we have to mess with. And again, controversial. But again, I've seen some interesting debates among strength coaches about that. That it's not about going to the Olympics. It's about making your athletes powerful. I decided to throw in some hammer curls. My, my arms did get worse quite a bit, but I'm like, well, if I'm going to start doing any curls again, I've been doing the other stuff. I'm like, let me go back and mess with hammer curls. I think they'll be more useful for my pulling in general, right? And I, I don't want them to be so fatigued that on my upper body days to where I do them because I do tons and tons of tricep work and then I've got to pull and stuff again the next day with a lot of the back work. So I didn't want to do curls on the upper body day so I can throw them in on the squat and deadlift days. And again, just a couple sets of hammer curls to failure because I do so much pulling right now. My biceps are getting a lot of stimulation, but let's go ahead and finish them off. Make sure that they're going to grow. Make sure they're going to grow. So again, a couple sets of hammer curls to failure, really high reps after doing all that pulling. Okay, it should help getting good stimulus. And again, especially when I add the ring grip, like neutral grip pull-ups back in. That'll be a lot of bicep work. But in the meantime, I do need to continue to do some direct bicep work. It would be wise. And then we did the reverse hypers. And as people have noted, I'm trying to do them more strict now. I've used the momentum method and got as heavy as possible with tons of momentum. And while that's interesting and useful, uh, I think the stricter is going to be the way to go. More controlled, trying to squeeze at the top, working off percentages of my squat. Now we're just a hair over 50%. So if those curious, I have I have 280 on here right now. I'm trying to do sets of 10 stricter and squeeze a little bit and then control the eccentric a little more. And it's not going to be super controlled. There's going to be swing to it, the nature of this device. But I'm not just letting it swing freely. I'm trying to let it come to some stop at the bottom, not swing way forward. So there's some swing and momentum to get the, the spine into traction because we do want that traction effect. But... Not to the point to where I'm not working the muscles. Because this is does need to be a muscle builder. It does need to hypertrophy my glutes, my hamstrings, my erectors. You know, it's just one of the movements I do, but it's a critical movement. And then obviously I go much lighter, about half this weight, for very high reps on at least three days a week for my restoration days. So my, my technical off days from training. Because I have my four scheduled days. 
and then we have the off days. Uh, but again, a lot covered in the session, a lot of new stuff, a lot of stuff we're doing moving forward, really good squat PR, um, incorporating some, some new concepts into all my supplemental work. Uh, but I'm happy with it. It's a great workout. So I hope it has been informative and I will talk to you guys next time.